Good morning. I'd like to welcome you back to our fourth Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection for the week. And uh, this week, because of the length of the message that we looked at uh, on the Sunday that we dealt with this, we're actually going to do a bonus episode on Saturday, which is something I don't typically do. But I'm um, not going to be able to pack this into five episodes. We're going to pack, pack it into six. And so I just want to give you a heads up on that. So be looking out for our final thoughts on Friday. Uh, but we still have uh, today and tomorrow before that. And so let's go ahead and dig back into this text again. And the word we're going to focus our attention on is the word calculation. Calculation. So Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 35, here's what it says. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and he was not able to finish. Now the word calculation is what we're going to focus our attention on this morning. What I mean by that is that faith in Christ and the discipleship that flows out of that genuine faith in Christ is something that begins with careful calculation. What I mean is that faith is not just a leap into the darkness, a, a I just hope everything works out kind of mindset. And that is the way that people often present Christian faith or religious faith. They present it as if it is anti-science, anti-logic, anti-common sense. And the fact is that faith involves a clear thinking that is being confronted and a thinking that churns and trusts in based on something that is deemed to be actually accurate. And so I want to break down this concept a little bit this morning. In verse 28, he says, Which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have suffi to sufficient to, fit to finish it? What's he talking about? Well, if we go back to our introduction, we remember this concept of faith and discipleship and the, 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 the connection between those two, I want to kind of see how that, that we, the things that we talked about at the beginning of our study um, on Monday, how they connect to this concept here. So first of all, we were reminded that we have to be confronted with God's law. And we have to be confronted with our inability to meet the perfect standard of righteousness that is Christ Jesus himself. We have to be exposed to the redemptive work. And we also have to be convinced by the Holy Spirit that we have a huge problem. And so the facts of the gospel and our, our connection to the law and how we fall short of it, these things have to weigh very heavily upon us. And we have to consider these facts. And so when we talked about repentance, we're describing really the calculation side of our faith. It is being confronted with facts, weighing those facts, and recognizing our thinking has to radically change, and that thinking change is going to point us to a dependence on Christ. So when our souls feel the weight of our sin and realize that we have an inescapable problem, this is part of the calculation side or the repentance side. Or when we talk about the fact that we see the case that Scripture makes regarding the person and the work of Christ. What do we do? We realize that the only thing keeping us from faith alone in Christ is pride. That's what keeps us from trusting Christ. Or when we think about verses like John 14, 6, we realize that he is the one and only way, truth, and life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. Or Acts 4, 12, we realize that there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Or 1 Timothy 2, 5, we realize that there's only one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. What is this all showing us? There's calculation. There's a, there is a, a, an, an evaluation mentally of these things. So faith isn't just a leap into the dark. It's something that involves conviction. Acts 17.30, he commands us to repent and to believe in the gospel. So that's what repentance is. It's describing the calculation side of our faith. We, have to we make a calculated choice that is going to forever change our eternal destination. 
instead of being an eternity separated from God in the lake of fire, it's going to be an eternity with God in his eternal kingdom, a new heaven and a new earth, the new Jerusalem. And this is also going to not only change our destiny, but also the course in which we walk on the way to the time that we will stand before God. And so in the same way that a person makes a calculation about a building project, and he chooses based on his calculation, we are to make a calculated choice in relation to Christ. Or in the same way that someone makes a calculated choice in relation to war and peace and, and finding terms of peace with a stronger group of people, we make such a calculation in relationship to Christ. And so when we think about this, we have to ask some questions of ourselves. What do we take away from it? Well, what we take away from it is that faith involves calculation. It involves a weighing of facts. It involves repentance and faith. And so there might be someone who's listening to this this morning that when you think about your salvation experience, you think of it in an experience sense or in a I prayed the prayer kind of a sense or an emotional sense. And I ask you the question, have you made a calculated decision that is resting alone in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and recognizes that your sin separates you, that Christ is God in flesh who died for you, that he really rose from the dead, and he's the one and only one way of salvation, and you've embraced him as your Savior. Which one is it? It's important for us to recognize that genuine faith involves calculation. And so, Lord willing, tomorrow we're going to break this down a little bit further, and then going into the weekend, we'll have some final thoughts. So I hope that you'll join us for these last two sessions, and I pray that they'll be a great encouragement to you. Have a blessed rest of your day. Lord willing, we'll meet again tomorrow. Bye now.